Welcome to Dakota Starry Nights. In this segment we're going to take a look at the CGEM tripod and how to improve upon it. And I'd like to start off by the azimuth adjustment. When you adjust the mount in azimuth for your polar alignment these two screws are engaged against this pin and by doing that the whole head will turn this way or that way depending upon which way you need to make your adjustment but there's a problem here this nipple that sets inside here is not precisely machined and you get this movement in all directions there's some slack there now the problem with that is when you're at high magnification and you go to turn this what it does before it actually starts to rotate it it pushes it this way or that way first to take the slack out and then what you have is if you probably have done polar alignment you'll know what I'm talking about the star will jump either left or right up or down depending before you really start to get any movement so what we're going to improve here now that we're going to make this modification we're going to take this from the ground up is you just simply take a piece of film that's available from like a pack that comes with a cell phone or a headphone or anything like that something like this this is uh, some brushes and they've got this plastic here and uh, I just cut a piece off the top here or you could cut it anywhere in the back where there's a nice uh, section of clear plastic and it's pretty thin and so we need to cut a piece about an inch and a quarter wide and about five four and seven eighths of an inch long let's look at it it's looking like well with this it's so thin it hardly even registers it's not even a millimeter it's less than that but just get something very thin like that because it's not much but it's a lot when it's magnified in your eyepiece or on your monitor when you're doing uh, astrophotography so we're just simply gonna take that and get this into view there we go and just coil it up inside this hole here drop it in there okay so it could overlap but if you get that measurement that I gave you that should be enough if it's too tight then you just keep cutting it taking about a quarter of an inch off the length of it until you can finally set this in there and now when we drop this in no play see that it's tight but yet it moves real easy and maybe even easier now that it has that uh, uh, vinyl in there but it totally takes that out so when you when you engage this screw it's going to immediately start to turn instead of jump this way or that way taking that slack out making your star go left or right before it starts to turn and go to the center the way you want it so that's our first improvement now moving on to the second improvement it's going to be the pier now what you see here is the pier adapter when you buy the Orion pier adapter for the CGEM because Celestron does not make a peer adapter uh, but the Orion one does work but you need to do some slight modifications to it here it is right here this is the peer adapter what comes with it is this piece here and this piece right here now this piece will set down in the top of your tripod with this nipple going and replacing this nipple normally this just sets right into your tripod and this is the substitute and that will drop right in once again we come in with tolerance issues and even though this doesn't turn what happens is is that you have I mean all these little imperfections start to add up at the camera and the, and the eyepiece if you're doing just visual work then it, it might not be that big of a deal but when you do astrophotography you folks out there that are doing that uh, you know what I'm talking about any little thing starts to magnify and make it uh, more of a difficult night than it should be 
So here we go here, and you see this is sloppy. Let's see if I can get that into the camera. That's sloppy. Okay, and then so when you go to screw it in, there's three screws here. One end is going to be pulling it this way, maybe off center too much, and that way, and this and that. If you get banding material that typically comes like when you buy uh, a box, a Celestron box, and they've got these bands on them, uh, you can take this and wrap it around here like that. A thin one, because this you don't want the metal one, you want the plastic one or the vinyl one. And you put this like that. Let's see if I can get it. It's a little tricky getting in there. And see, you can see that. Let's see. There. And it's right in there now. And that centers it up really nice, and you can see it's not dropping. There's no slack now. So that is a nice uh, fix for that to keep it nice and centered in that piece so that when you put in the screws uh, that this comes with, uh, you'll be able to pull it equally on each side. Okay, so that's, that's for the pier. Now, let's move on to the next subject. Okay, that brings us to the next part of the improvement, and that is the pier extension. The pier extension is an Orion extension, and uh, it comes uh, with two pieces. So this plate adapter sits in here on top of the uh, tripod. The uh, pier extension sits here, and then the uh, adapter that goes inside the equatorial head sits here like that and they're attached with allen screws here on the side and that keeps them uh, relatively secure but not really secure enough and here's the issue that I've run into the problem is twofold one is that this plate here will tend to spin around because it's only being held by the pin. The solution I came up with was to tap this out with a round hole in order to set an Allen head screw right here like that. You can see that flush and then tap it out here in order to drive that Allen head screw there and keep this from rotating. That worked okay but I still had problems up here at the top. The equatorial head, the only thing that's holding that in place are these three screws right here. And you get, after a while, one of the beauties about this mount over the C-Gem DX, which has a heavy-duty tripod, is the lightness of the C-Gem tripod. And so the portability is what makes this attractive. And I wanted a grab-and-go type situation here, and I wasn't interested in a heavier tripod because that pretty much knocks out the grab-and-go, taking that in and out of a car constantly. It gets uh, old pretty quick. But with this extension, the advantage of the extension is, is that it, the equatorial head is higher, it makes it more comfortable for viewing, and you wouldn't have to necessarily extend your legs out long uh, as long because uh, the extension gets that eyepiece up higher. But the problem with it again is that the whole equatorial head is being held by these three screws. If you're into astrophotography, uh, this is going to be a real problem. I noticed over time uh, there was a play going on with the equatorial head racking and even a small amount, uh, especially at long focal lengths, that's going to really show up. So Originally, the design was to take this piece here, this is the original uh, C-Gem uh, screw, anchor screw, and that went all the way up into, into the equatorial head and pulled the whole head down against this uh, tripod, and that, that worked pretty good. And if you don't need the pier extension, uh, then this part of the video you could just skip. But if you're looking for the pure extension but want the same stability that you get with the screw going all the way up, then here's the solution to it. I purchased a 12 millimeter by 
1.75, that's the pitch thread, and cut it down to 21 and an eighth inch or a quarter inch. And what this is going to allow us to do, this will take us all the way down to the bottom at the same length that this would normally set. And then taking the uh, piece that already came with it, you'll have to purchase some nuts. But taking this, and this is what came with the gem, you can now pull the head, because this will come through the pier, up through the pier like that, and grab the center of that head, and then pull this whole thing together. The pier, the head, everything against the tripod. And you're still going to use these screws, but this will be the final uh, cincher that's going to really hold this whole uh, unit together and it'll totally eliminate this rocking that, that starts to occur after one or two times that you go to move it. And so uh, that's the key. Now I purchased this uh, 12 millimeter by 1.75 rod. It was longer than what I needed uh, and I just cut it down. And I purchased this at a local Ace Hardware store. Uh, we have three of them here in town and one of them had it. And uh, so it's not like a real exotic type thing. You might find this at uh, Lowe's or Ace or online if you have to. But this is a real good solid solution. Okay, another thing we'd like to do here is to get some metal spacers. You can get some pipe or something at your local hardware store. This is a bushing is what I picked up. You can even get a bushing. And uh, you want it about an inch or so long and to slide that underneath there like that. I've got two of them here and that gives me uh, approximately about an inch and a half uh, in length and we want that so that when we go to put our hand underneath the tripod like that to tighten this up it clears the bottom of the tripod plate. Uh, this coupled with uh, the uh, tripod spreader and I've already done a video here on Dakota Starry Nights that uh, talks about this. Uh, makes for a real solid platform but there's one other feature we're going to add to this and it's going to make this as sturdy as, a, as the DX with the portability of the normal C-Gem tripod. Okay so if we're going to use this rod in order for us to be able to tighten up the equatorial head at the top with the rod extending through the bottom of the tripod up through the here extension we have if we leave it the way it is we have four points where the rod encounters thread the adapter that fits in here the tripod itself is threaded the adapter that fits inside the equatorial head that replaces the tripod and inside the equatorial head there's thread and so you wouldn't be able to loosen the equatorial head in order to adjust it or even assemble this completely for that matter tight tightly so what we're going to need to do is drill this out drill these threads out here with a half inch drill bit and the adapter uh, as well drill the thread out there that will leave just two threaded parts which will be the adapter that fits inside the equatorial head and the equatorial head itself. So if you decide you don't want to drill this out then you could forego the pier extension and still use the extra ballasting weight that's explained after this segment by utilizing a coupler on the bottom of the original uh, bolt. The other thing we need to do besides drilling the hole out here and here is to drill a hole on this adapter, one there and then one here and then create a tap there and opposite to match up these two holes so that we can put some allen head screws right there like that in order to mount this plate securely to the top of the tripod because now that there's no thread there uh, there will be no way for this to be mounted to the tripod. Okay, so I've drilled out the pure adapter and the bottom of the tripod as well. 
and then I drilled a hole like similar like this over here for this quarter inch bolt or Allen head screw and then tapped out the bottom of the uh, tripod uh, after taking the bolt and centering it to where that is absolutely centered because there's a little bit of play in here uh, so to get it centered once I got it centered I went ahead and bolted this down and now I'll mark with a drill bit just barely touch it so I can get a spot because now we'll have to drill it out with a smaller bit so that we can run the tap in there in order to uh, use the Allen head screw and tighten this end down and then this will be tightened at two points so that when we put the collar on here it's nice and tight and when you cinch it all down this the, the pressure that's coming in from the top of the equatorial head let's see you know from up here that should sandwich everything together we're using the same size bit that drilled this hole so we can get a dead center for the tap so we're just going to take that bit put it in there just bump it okay so now I don't know if you could see that right there you could see that little silver spot uh, left by the drill bit. I've removed the adapter plate so that we can drill through here for the, the quarter inch tap that's going to go uh, through there. Let's drill that out. We'll keep the drill nice and perpendicular on that spot, nice and easy at a slow speed. Okay, with the shavings removed, we'll tap it out, set the tap in there, get it perpendicular. apply a little bit of pressure now this is aluminum so it's kind of easy the main thing is keeping that pressure on there and keeping it perpendicular turning it slow and always putting a downward pressure these quarter inch taps are really handy by the way I use them all the time on these uh, telescope accessories uh, so it's a handy thing to have so if you don't have it and you have to buy it uh, you'll find plenty of uses for it later on. So, see, I go down and then I back it off a little bit, clean it out, and go down, back it out. I believe we're through. Okay, now that we have it tapped out, we could put our adapter in. But before we do that, I want to point out that I found that these holes on the uh, pier extension and the adapter don't quite line up when this sets down here that is this sets lower and these holes are higher so in order to make up for that I got a piece of uh, plastic here that's about 3 30 seconds of an inch thick and of course your mileage may vary and uh, it will allow this to set up once we put it here it sets up a little higher so that this hole here these holes line up with those holes uh, and also they've been uh, drilled out here on the side with half circles uh, using a Fossner bit and that will allow the bolts to uh, set down in there and clear the uh, the shim so let's do that we'll set this in here like that holes looking pretty good and tighten it down now you don't want to horse them down because remember it's it's aluminum that feels about right okay now we need to cover one more important thing before you do this before you select where that adapter plate on the bottom is that we just tapped out you need to make sure that the holes here line up with this hole where you're gonna put this pin now this pin typically is put over a single leg and that leg typically points north and the reason why you want that is so that the counterweight bar is down here it makes for a more stabilized mount so the adapter on the bottom will rotate in any way you want so you need to uh, locate it to where these holes here will line up with the holes up here into the equatorial head adapter so you have a hole here and then you have a pin there's another hole here on this side, see, and but there's no 
there's no hole here. So you want to get with the one, you want to get with the hole that is with this hole that attaches to the uh, pier extension. And then you want to orient, orientate that to where it's right over your north leg so that when you set the equatorial head down there your counterweight bar is going to be in the proper position. I did some initial testing and it appears that this adapter that goes inside the equatorial head, the adapter that comes with the pier extension, it's threaded as well and it appears that that has to be drilled out too just like the uh, tripod uh, base and the adapter that goes to the tripod base to allow the bolt to pull the equatorial head down tight against here. So we're going to drill that out. Okay, so we drilled that out with a half inch drill bit. Uh, we're going to put our vinyl shim down in there and I'm taking a little bit of uh, uh, super lube or white liniment, whichever you, you prefer. I think we'll put a little bit of super lube on here, just a little film of that. Okay, she's in there now. Okay, now that feels pretty good. Take our bolt. And now the only thing we're screwing into at this point is the equatorial head. And I believe we're engaged. So now before we cinch this down, you know, really all the way, we want to take and loosen these screws here on the side just to taste. Uh, and uh, possibly these up here. And the reason why we want to do that, in case there's any little bit of fluctuation there, we're not pushing up against these uh, bolts that we're actually engaging the column to the uh, tripod. So now that that's all loose, see, nice and loose, now I'll tighten it up, get it nice and snug. And now that that establishes the compression here, now I can snug these back up and uh, get this where it needs to be. It doesn't look like it, it changed, you know, but sometimes a little variation can make a difference. So this is one way to guarantee that, you know, we're doing this right and that we're not creating a problem because we're here to solve the problem, not to create or add to it. Sounds like Gene Kranz and Apollo 13, right? And now if we wanted to change the uh, azimuth, let's just snug these up. Okay, now they're both touched, so let's loosen this one, okay, and say we got to go that way. So I'll loosen this uh, and get nut down here. Let's see. Look at that. Oh, nice. She's turning real nice and slow. No herky-jerky movement. Lock it down. Lock this down on this side. Solid. Beautiful. Beautiful. So the key is you have to drill. You have to be brave here. You have to drill the uh, tripod head. You have to drill the uh, adapter, uh, pier adapter to the tripod. You have to drill and then you just thread it up inside the equatorial head. And man, that, that is like rock solid. I wish you guys could feel that. I mean, there's no movement whatsoever there. She's solid. Okay, so now that we've got those spacers there, we're gonna tighten this rod up. And uh, this assumes that the equatorial head is already sitting on here. But for this demonstration, we're just keeping that off so that you guys get a better uh, look at this. So here it is with the knob, and we've tightened that uh, nut up against the bottom of the tripod, so this is pretty solid right now. And the next improvement we're gonna make here uh, is the, the tool tray or the spreader that the gem comes with typically attaches like that. Now, you may have seen this uh, suggested in uh, other videos or on other uh, websites, but this really is a pretty good idea. And all this is is PVC pipe uh, schedule 40 uh, that has been cut in half. And it is two inch PVC pipe cut in half. Uh, and then this acts as a harmonic damper. Uh, to keep the harmonics low. 
Now, if you if you if you're just a, a, a visual guy, you may not you know need this, but okay, there we are. Now we take a nut and a washer and put it up against the bottom of the tool tray. We tighten that up, and as that spreads, any harmonics that comes down off the shaft will not come into the tubing and it will be coming down here. And this is going to be the the icing on the cake that's going to really make this mount terrific. Now here is a coupler and it's a metric coupler. You can find these at the hardware store. On the end of your bolt, your 12 millimeter bolt, you screw this on the bottom of it like that. Get it up in there like that. Now that's snug. And now we take this barbell weights and all this is is a 12 millimeter bolt with a big flat washer back here and a 10 pound barbell weight and a 5 pound barbell weight that's stacked together and we're going to attach it to the bottom of this uh, coupler here. Now you could use just 10 pounds if you want, but I picked these up at a secondhand store and they were relatively cheap. Tighten that up. And now what you've got here is more mass to this tripod, which is what gives the CGEM DX its advantage, the mass. So it gives it like a peer like uh, improvement in performance for the equatorial head. You could take a CGEM equatorial head and if you put it on a pier, you would get similar uh, tracking improvement as you would with the CGEM DX tripod. Uh, the big advantage of the DX is the uh, heavier uh, uh, tripod uh, and the uh, thicker uh, counterweight bar and it's claimed that they give the motors a little more power uh, and it also comes with the spreader. So. It, if the weight, carrying the weight is not an issue, then, and you're buying a, a C-Gem or an equatorial mount for the first time, uh, the $600 difference between the C-Gem DX and the C-Gem regular may be worth it to you. But if you already have a C-Gem and you're kind of happy with it, but you'd like to kind of beef it up a little bit, then, uh, and weight is an issue, uh, then this may be a better alternative. And the reason why I say that is that this breaks away from the tripod. And if you're just doing visual work, you really might not need this. In fact, I don't think you would if you're doing visual work. But if you wanted to do some astrophotography for the night, then you'd break out your uh, dash pot uh, because this also has the added advantage. It takes up any harmonic vibration coming through this pipe and displaces it around here. It's typically known in the industry as a dash pot. Now this isn't, you know, a technically a dash pot, but it has some similar characteristics to it and it does improve a little bit uh, uh, by dampening out any vibrations because of the way this is structured, that and incorporating this pipe. And every little bit helps in this game of astrophotography. And so uh, this is a nice feature and you can take this off and put it on as needed. Uh, so uh, these improvements are going to uh, make life a little easier at your dark site or in your backyard if you're doing narrow band imaging. And uh, so that's it for today. And uh, uh, I hope you liked the video and uh, don't forget to subscribe because I'm constantly coming up with new videos and new ways to make our lives a little easier when it comes to uh, astro uh, photography and astro uh, viewing. Clear skies to you all. Thanks for watching Dakota Starry Nights. Cheers.